Welcome, this is the AP Physics Workbook Tutorial. Here I'm going to be covering Unit 5, Momentum. The section is 5.8, Experimental Design Impulse. Here's the scenario. The first part asks you to edit these, this lab procedure to follow this process. So what is going to happen is basically they're going to shoot this cart here, hit the motion detector, and it's going to bounce back. And they're going to calculate basically the impulse. All right. So we are going to edit the procedure and cut out some necessary steps. So first of all, it says gather all the material on the exam that's already given. So you can knock this one out, record the mass of the cart. That is correct. That should be a good. That's the first one you should have plug in both the motor detector and the force detector detector you should already have that done check that each device is already working you in the exam you have to assume that the device is already working secure the motion detector to the ring stand that is already given because if you take a look the stand and force sensor is already attached if it wasn't in the setup like that, then you have to include that step. Attach the cardboard target to the cart so that it can be seen by the motion detector on this exam. Notice the cardboard is already in line with the motion detector. So the diagram gives that away. So you don't need to write it. Align the motion decenter with the target board. Well, it's already a line in the picture, so you don't need it. Create a table in your notebook that should already be defaulted. You should already do that. So you not you do not need to write that in the precision. Set the motion sensors to record the cart's motion. You should already have that. Begin recording the force motion with your computer. That's going to be the first thing that we have to do. That is your measuring step. Give the cart. So you have to turn it on first. Okay. A lot of people will think you want to give the cart a push first. You don't. Okay. You have to turn it on because if you do this and push it first, the computer is going to record it after the push. So make sure you have record, begin the recording first, and then give the cart a push. After the collision, collect the force sensor has bounced back and stop recording forces and the motion diagram. That is correct. Next, you want to determine the impulse. That is correct. 13, there's steps on how to find the impulse. Um, 14, repeat the steps. Well, yeah, we, we want to repeat it. And then clean up the lab well you don't need this because it's already given that you clean up the station okay so this is the only important thing that you need right so if i take out all the steps here so let's see how many steps i really have okay let's see i have let's see one i have here step one Step two, step three, step four, step five. And then if they want to repeat this, step six. So you will say you are going to actually repeat step one through five. <laughs> repeat steps one well, with different initial pushes. So you wouldn't do one because you already have it. Uh, so you want to repeat step two to step five with different initial pushes. Okay, so to get the impulse, there's different ways to get the impulse, right? Uh, I think this will actually explain to you how to get the impulse, right? So the determining impulse step here will be explained in the later part. If you want notes on how to get impulse, it's right here. This is in your book. The impulse is defined by the force times the change in time. We can see that the total change in momentum is equal to the impulse. This is a graph of the force and time diagram. And they say that the force is generally not constant and often 
it varies in time it's going to go up then hit down go down because that's basically what's happening when it hits the cardboard so what you have to do is you have to approximate it and it is just going to be the area under the curve all right so that's how you find impulse using this set of notes all right so now let's sketch the graph with the velocity as a function of time so this is going so we have the cart going hitting then coming back so let's just graph the velocity really quick so first of all it goes this way with a positive velocity right positive velocity positive velocity positive velocity positive velocity then it's going to here go to zero then it's going to come back all right so let's say it starts up here it has a high value okay it has the same velocity it should have the same velocity then it's gonna hit so the velocity is gonna drop and it's gonna come down negative so look at the area here this is one two three four five six okay so normally you would think it's one two three four five six so you think it would normally be this that's not correct this is true if the initial velocity is equal to the final velocity but that's not true this happens in real life think um, energy is lost during the collision so it doesn't go down here to six negative okay it's gonna come shorter all right and it could go like this so this is how it will actually look like in your data. In theory, what we what we think it sh that's how it should look like. The reason why this. So let me show you. The distance, let's say between here and here, let's say this. I'm just making up some numbers. Is six meters per second, right? We think that here is also going to be six meters per second. It's not. This is going to be four meters per second. I'm just throwing out some numbers. The reason why it's less is because you lost some of the energy because things get lost to thermal and sound and drag. Okay. That's why it's less like that. Next, we want to look at the force. How should the force look like? Well, we start the timer, so it's flat. So this isn't, this is, let's see how long did I have this for? So I have it right here, one. So this should be the same distance, okay? Right, the velocity is changing. During this interval right here, during this interval, that the velocity is changing right here during this interval i want to make it this interval okay it's the same thing during this interval this is what happened this is when the force is going to change then it's going to come back and the force is going to be zero again right and what's happening is is the force positive or negative well it depends on the direction Okay, it's going to loop down here. All right. All right. So it's going to look something like that. Okay. The blue line here just indicates the interval that the velocity changes. And that's when what happens when force occurs. Okay. All right. Remember, the force is not constant. All right. You would think, oh, wait, look, look at the negative slope. Shouldn't it look something like this? Shouldn't it, the velocity, the slope down here is, let's say, negative 7 over 2. So shouldn't it be like this value, negative 7 over 2? No, right? Um, slope, uh, the, we see that the notes here, it shows that the impact of the forces varies. Okay, so it's going to act like a curve. So that's why the force here is going to curve right but it's going to drop down to that same value point now 
you want to explain how these representations can give you to determine impulse. There's different ways to get impulse. I'm going to show you two ways. The first method is called the area under the curve. Impulse is the force times the time. Multiply by the time. Impulse is the area of the curve of the force versus time graph. You estimate the curve to be a simple shape like a rectangle and compute the area. Other options to include a computer program that can determine the curve. Second method is the velocity. Impulse is the change in momentum, which can be defined by that momentum final minus momentum initial or before. That's how it looks like once you plug in the values MVF minus MVI. All you need is the initial and final velocity that can be found on the graph mass is already known for. So here, velocity initial would be right here. V initial, okay, or just V. And this would be V final or just V1, right? The force under the curve would be this area that you can get. Right? So that's how you find impulse.